We're just delighted to have you with us for the Yale Youth Ministry Institute lecture on finding joy or resourcing joy in the midst of anxiety. And we're addressing anxiety in part because most of us know that uh, the levels of anxiety being carried by our young people are just extraordinary. And I, I think you shared with us a statistic that as much as a quarter and maybe a third of our young people are now experiencing a diagnosable levels of anxiety. And I, I read something, I just want to test this because it seems so exceptional. I read a report that said that the average level of anxiety carried by an American adolescent is now at a level that in the 1950s we would have diagnosed and perhaps institutionalized. Does that overstate our problem or are we really that having that acute an epidemic? I, I think that's pretty accurate. If it is an overstatement, it's not by much. I, I think this is, uh, this points to what, you know, folks are saying is an epidemic of anxiety among young people in the United States. And um, the question is, has it always been there and we haven't noticed it as much? And there's probably some of that we're paying closer attention now, which is a good thing. But I think in what we're able to measure, the, the, the uh, scores for anxiety, you will, the diagnosable levels of anxiety are much higher than they were a generation or longer ago. And I think there's some reasons for that, if, uh, if I may. I mean, there are things in the culture that kids are aware of today more uh, readily and more pervasively than perhaps ever before. 24-hour news cycle, violence, mm -hmm. um, political, racial, economic, environmental kinds of struggles that, that we in the U.S. And, and folks all across the world are experiencing. Um, but I also think that, and this hits a little closer to home, that uh, there's lots of evidence that, that we, uh, well-meaning, uh, many of us parent in ways that may be more conducive to anxiety, that we uh, are the the quote-unquote helico uh, helicopter mm -hmm. parent generation mm -hmm. that in um, well-meaning ways protects or seeks to protect children so much from the world and from stumbling and from, um, you know, struggles that we may inadvertently uh, lower their tolerance for the sort of normal experiences that come with, with childhood. And by doing that, we may set them up for more anxiety than otherwise they uh, they would experience. I don't want to overstate that, but I think that's a component along with what's going on out in the culture. Uh, what we're doing at home can have some of those same kinds of outcomes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's um, especially true maybe for more privileged parents. Um, and then uh, there's a different set of social anxieties that come in poorer families, I think, yeah. just trying to make ends meet or making complicated decisions. Do I go to college or do I take care of my grandma who's on hospice? Because that's something that's a family value. Is uh, you know, just that all the decisions are so heightened in uh, lower income families. Um, the, uh, I think there's anxiety that comes from life events that are part of the normal course of life. So uh, you, one of the uh, girls in one of my youth groups had her father suffer a stroke and he had some uh, functional damage and his life changed and she had some anxiety around coping with the grief of that which was a very silenced invisible grief in the youth group uh, that's a kind of not a preventable suffering um, I think there's also kind of suffering from oppression that people are facing uh, um, minorities facing microaggressions uh, being targeted um, there's a lot of fear for uh, dreamers uh, right now um, who are wondering whether they're whether they have any purchase in the society or any place in it and I, so I would just say I think there's kind of different levels of anxiety and I would say generally we're more expo exposed to all of it nowadays yeah, I agree